Hello everybody, today is Monday the 3rd of October. Happy October everybody, it's one of the nicest months. Um, I am preparing my doctor appointments and now I'm having some ramen. It really goes onto my nervous system and my well-being when I do that stuff. I have cold hands, cold feet. I can't, can hardly eat because of nervousness, high blood pressure or low blood pressure, I'm not sure. My heart is a bit racing and I just feel not, not well and weak. And when I don't eat, that gets even worse. So I just found some ramen in, in the cupboard. We have some. What's the word for that? I don't know, there's a word for that. And then I have finished already the the question thing is for the first one in the afternoon, which is just a physical examination. I am very happy they had a lot of um, multiple choice things with all the achings and ailments you could have. And I did have quite a few, so I'm happy about that because, again, I am having kind of a depressive thingy and I don't show that. <laughs> it's also not that dark or something, it's more yeah, a bit sad or something. It's, it's not. It's more with the the eating is hard, sleeping gets hard, doing things is hard, um, and uh, sometimes I have a complete social interaction thingy that I don't want to meet anybody because I cannot stand it. But that was at the beginning of September. That got better. And also, I am a harmony chunky. And the moment, please. I had to add a sauce in the in the ramen. As I said, I'm a harmony chunky, and I am very very sensitive. And when I feel or when I notice that somebody's angry or there's a bad vibe after all over the thingy, then I crack a choke or something. And I don't even do that on. Oh, I need to crack a choke now. So not not on purpose. It's just something I do. I am. Um, I can brighten the mood somewhere because I cannot stand it when it's um, when it's not good because um, I guess inside of me it is not that chipper so I, I anything else that's bad on the outside I, I don't need that on top of that I cannot stand it and then I look like a clown or or the sunshine when I used to tell people about my depressions they never believed me because they said you're such a sunshine and um, but there's um, the thing with depression, there are some who are very openly so and others, I mean I talk about it a lot, so it's not that I'm hiding it, just they are more into clownery or it's called la vierte depression, I don't know the, the word in English, but when it's more hidden and um, clownery is something to cover that up and again it's not something I do on purpose, uh, but that just happens, it's how I work and it might lead to troubles with the doctors and the psychiatrists because I don't come along like oh, I don't feel good because that makes me angry. <laughs> if I would do that, I would. Uh, that's not me, and I cannot do that. And uh, I need to tell them that that uh, also I come along like coherent or or try to. I forget a lot in my head, but still bring my stuff across. Um, now I'm a bit scared I cannot do that anymore that's why I'm writing it down and now I just forgot what I was talking about <laughs> which is kind of the point <laughs> so. and here are the notes I'm taking I did write down the questions they are going to ask me and uh, I'm writing it down and it's quite a big font I'm already, I've already printed it out um, so I don't lose it I have three pages so far and I'm I think I'm on the first question block <laughs> I'm still on, on that one, and then there's all those questions, but those are a bit shorter, I think. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing, and then I'm prepared. And then, and then there's tomorrow, I have Tuesday for myself, and then I hope I can sleep from Tuesday to Wednesday. Also, I wrote an email to that doctor I see in the morning at 10, because I looked out my, my, my trains and stuff, looked them up, and my the train ride goes bus and everything goes two hours 17 and I, I arrive at 9 56 there four minutes to 10 at the bus stop and then I have to walk for about five minutes 
So I will be about two to three or five minutes late for my appointment. So I wrote an email to tell that so that that would happen and he should maybe count on that because I'm not coming an hour sooner just because I will be two, three minutes too late. Um, so that was my plan. And I also wrote him that already going there is too much for me. So he already has a little impression of me. <laughs> and, and that is that. It is now four o'clock in the afternoon, nearly half past three. And I am finished with my preparations. I have 10 pages of notes, but it's quite a big font. And uh, um, it was quite all right to do that. I'm still a bit scared that I didn't write what I want to say because I have the experience of me trying to explain how I am and it never gets across um, because I don't know, maybe I do it implicitly or I say stuff differently and don't say it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And I wrote, I, I said that I wrote a short message that I might be a few minutes later and also said that this um, going there is already too much for me just so that he knows that. And then he wrote a very, very, very kind message back and he understood and he thanked me for writing such a nice email and that he is aware and also the other doctor that it is very much for me, this whole examination. And that's why they decided to put that on the same day so I don't have to travel that far twice so that was very nice I, I wrote back one more time and thanked him for that because I rarely hear that people are aware of um, how hard stuff is for me and that was just very nice and now I'm done <laughs> and uh, I guess I take a break and um, <clears throat> yeah and I'm having a headache yeah it's very sunny outside so I go to the couch and watch some TV Today is Tuesday the 4th of October and since yesterday evening I don't feel so good. I had a headache yesterday all day and now I'm very weak today and um, felt a bit feverish. I guess I have a high temperature so I put on Vicks Vaporop thingy. I have my warming bottle for the feet and I hope it doesn't get worse because tomorrow I need to travel for 12 hours. So uh, The preparation yesterday was great and now I'm just worried that I'm not fit enough tomorrow. I still have to go, but yeah. Because if I, even if I would move those appointments, I, I might be sick on that day again, because that's what usually happens, so. So it is getting worse, and I just thought about canceling. I'm calling the insurance thingy and tell them that I am getting very ill. But uh, I just watched my other video where I said that I would have to move it and might be sick on that day too, so. I, I don't know. Um, it's it's not fun and uh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> half past five the next day in the evening and I am back from Basel. It was quite interesting the day. Um, it picked up in the end it was all fine turned out well even got six bucks <laughs> somewhere but it did not start well. Um, yesterday I felt very sick in the evening it was a bit better then at 10 to 12 or something and then I couldn't sleep until 3 3 30 4 had to get up at seven <laughs> and then um, I wasn't that happy in the morning, but it was all right, not that weak because it could be that I barely can walk, but that was fine. There's too much light there. And then I was in the, at the train station, entering the train and then I saw there is, um, they, still, they have the, uh, the, the, you have to wear a mask in the German train. And I'm not used to that anymore. And I had one with me, 
but the Germans have very strict things so you need a certain kind of mask I did not have that one so I didn't go entirely into the train but stayed out, out of the compartments with my other mask and just hope they wouldn't kick me out and then um, it was time that the train would leave and after five minutes there was a a thingy on the on the loudspeaker that uh, there is a power cut somewhere in between Basel and Schaffhausen and we would have to wait we don't know what ha what's gonna happen and so waited at a quarter past so 15 minutes later I checked my app to see if I could, should hop on the Swiss train I could have done that but two minutes would have just been enough time to switch the train but not get the ticket so I didn't do that and then <laughs> at half past eight they told us um, yeah we don't know how it's going on and we should try to look for another connection so then i i checked my trains and my appointment would have been at 10 in basel and uh, with the swiss train i would be there at 20 to 12. but i called the psychiatrist who is very nice and informed him and he then knew that i would be later and that we could go longer so that was all right and then I called the other appointment which I would have had in the afternoon at two to tell them that I might be late there too because we do our first apartment not at 10 but at the quarter to 12 to till quarter past one or something and um, the lady was very nice she said she passes on the message and then uh, when I was arriving at S in Zurich I checked my phone and saw that she called me back and told me that actually the appointment in the afternoon is being cancelled because he's a doctor there and he had to cover for others who were sick or something. So then I was already in Zurich. Um, but then I had time for the first one. Uh, we took time from a quarter to 12 till a quarter to two. And now I'm back at half past five. And the... That's when you go over Switzerland. And also I was going to the ticket thingy to change the ticket back, which I already had and couldn't use because of because of the power cut cut. And that took half an hour. And then I got six bucks there because I was waiting for so patiently for her to figure out how to do that. <laughs> that was very fun. And also in the morning, when I tried to look for another train, went off the German one. I saw my old neighbor and now I have her address again. I also know that my other old neighbor, Frau Roth, is still alive. She's 99. I'm very happy about that. And um, now I want to make a card for Marianne. She was my neighbor and she said it again. I lost so much weight. She told me. <laughs> She's the only one who does that. And um, so all in all, it was good. <laughs> But I was very angry in the morning and I, I thought I would never get out of Schaffhausen because I um, also had an anger attack <laughs> at night. So I did that um, because at, the train was supposed to leave at eight and at nine I was still in Schaffhausen and 9.15 <laughs> I was sitting in another train which should leave at 9.17 or 18. And then it didn't immediately leave and normally they leave immediately and I got a bit scared that I would just not get out of Schaffhausen. So I think because of me there was a whole power cut and the whole <laughs> network, network rail station way thingy. So and now I need to take care of my cats and I took a painkiller because I'm getting a very bad headache already since Basel. My head hurts quite a bit. I closed my eyes a lot um, for the way back home and it was a very good appointment. Um, doctor was very nice, very friendly. And um, I need to go another time now for the one in the afternoon, but that will be another time and they will call me. And maybe tomorrow I will have to contact uh, the insurance thingy to tell them what happened today. And um, yeah, with the cancelment of the second appointment, and that's that. And here I have a coffee with caramel. And I really wanted a coffee now. I had one in the morning. Half one. And then a toast and just dry bread. 
actually on the train i didn't have much time today so really wanted the coffee it's also why i took the painkiller and so thank you for listening i don't think the vlog is over but thank you for listening <coughs> well i didn't drink the coffee i just <laughs> went um to lie down because the headache gets more and so on Today is Thursday, the 6th of October, and I'm, uh, it is 5 to 10, and I'm getting ready, ready to go shopping with my parents. I am quite tired and physically exhausted. Uh, I feel a bit like I have um, muscle aches all over my body, I guess from being up all day yesterday. Yeah, and uh, I just, yesterday when I was home, I really, I like seeing my parents once a week and go shopping and then we drink a coffee and I always take some caramel syrup in my coffee there and that's all that is my highlight. <laughs> I really didn't want to miss out on that because normally we go yesterday, Wednesdays, and then uh, when I saw that I'm not too bad yesterday, I did ask them if they have time today and they did and now let's see. I don't have to go for a lot. Um, I don't need to shop a lot. So, good morning. It is now after shopping. Um, it was fine. I just felt like I'm having a hangover or something. And now I'm back home. And now um, I'm at the end of my energy. So, from now on, I need to rest. I'm on my couch. And recharge because of yesterday. Because of the Basel trip. But I was lying here and uh, thinking about things. And I thought maybe you would find the Swiss school system interesting so i want to sketch that out a bit and i would like to tell you how i how it was in, in my time it has now changed a few times already and maybe i tell you a few changes and also it's different from canton to canton i don't know which ones have the same system as we do they call things differently and they can go into the different um, schools at different times so that's different and i got um, an order i made I ordered some very, very, very cute kids bo children's books. And then it took so long to come, that's why I bought one yes, uh, the last time um, in the store. But I like the other ones better. Um, because I can tell you the story from the one I started. It's not that special, but I'll do that later. So I'll show you the books. So I got this one, which is called Wenn ich groß bin, werde ich Fledermaus. And this is funny because a fleder mouse is a bat. But mouse means the same in English, mouse. We just spell it differently. And plural will be moise mit, uh, with dots here and then e. And that's why it's funny because it's it's the mouse. Also, a fleder mouse means bat. And this is a normal mouse, but she wants to become a fleder mouse. Because with fleder will be a mouse with wings. And that's why this um this works in german because it's funny but it wouldn't wor work with bat unless you would call the bats winged mice or something then it then it would work so when i grow up i wanna um i'll become a bat yeah but it's only only funny in german <laughs> because of the word spiel the pun or something and this is super cute oh, that because it has uh, more pictures, less text, and I can, I already pointed out the big one in this book, it was a flader mouse, but winged mouse. And then I have Lotti und Otto. Um, those are those two. Now I don't know what they are. Otters. Yep. And I find it super cute with the pictures and there's a bit more text. So I, I'm going to start with that one, less text. And then go over the, to this one, uh, which I think is super cute and better to read than the other one I started with you guys. And then I have two more with Lotti und Otto. Lotti und Otto. And I think this is also with pictures. Yeah, so this will be next. And then I have one which is more written, more like the other one, which is harder. But um, so this one will be the last. So we got to work through <laughs> those kids books together. But next I want to show you, here's Mutina and um, the 
Swiss school system. Hey, Mousy. <laughs> Hi. <gasps> I'm Fudu. <laughs> yeah, you're on camera. Yeah. And there you go. Don't don't step on it. Because she would. <laughs> Hi, Mousy. They were alone all day yesterday. Huh? But she's very cute at the moment. <laughs> I don't know how bright that is, and if you see it, I'm on the on the couch thingy. So, as with five, is it on that? five years, which will be Jahre in German, we start kindergarten. Kindergarten which is preschool and it normally takes two years and then you get names like um, the hedgehogs and rabbit and they are all in the same room and you start with five years and then you turn six and you get into the second kindergarten and then the, sec the the older ones take a little care of the younger ones. This also helps the, the kids to take care of each other and look out and help. And that also teaches you um, good things. And then one, and uh, it's not like school. Um, they learn a lot of stuff, but it's all in games and things. Also the colors. We don't start reading in kindergarten. Um, it's more colors and, and um, motorical skills like cutting things, staying inside the lines when you color something. I've heard from a German, as a US parents live in German now with three or four kids and they stress it a lot that in Germany they take a lot of, um, they focus a lot on neat handwriting and staying inside the lines and stuff. And that also starts in kindergarten. And other than that, you have social themes, like, um, as I said, taking care of each other and stuff. And then one sees, one looks at each kid somehow, how they are behaving and things, if they are ready to go to school. And those who go to school, that they, they pass on, and others might have a third kindergarten Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, third year in the kindergarten. If not, they go to primary school, which goes six years. One, two, three, four, five, six. And they start that when they are seven years old. And normally, uh, it differs. And um, normally you are two years at the same teacher. But sometimes it's three. Um, so... But then they are all in the first grade. Um, that means erste Klasse. And then they all go into the second grade, zweite Klasse. And then in the dritte Klasse, vierte Klasse, fünfte Klasse und sechste Klasse. And this works in bigger towns like that. If you are in a smaller countryside town where there are not as many kids, it might happen that they have all those different grades in the same classroom and then they switch there. You have a little bit of the same principle like the older ones help the younger ones but also the teacher has to do individual stuff for, for everybody. I have not experienced that. I was just um, first two years I was uh, at Falgasso, uh, dritte, vierte, I was at Frau Vollenweiler, which was also the same teacher that my older sister had. And then because um, my school was too small, I had to go to another school then for the fifth and sixth grade. Oh, that's Mutsina. Mouji. <laughs> oh, Fuji. <laughs> okay, but uh, that's normally how it goes. And back then, in my days, I had to make a test, take a test uh, for the high school. So this is kind of, what's it called? 
the thing before high school elementary school i think elementary school and we call grundschule i uh, know that's the german we call it primar schule uh, primary school and then we go to secondary school secundar schule it's not like secondary like less less worthy but um uh, further um advanced um and then we, we i needed to take a test and if i succeeded that test then i got to the secundar schule we call it just sec and if you don't pass that test you still go to a higher school but this is called real schule they kind of have the same stuff, but it's not, it's just a little less um, academic. I don't really know it. Yeah. And they have three years of that. And if you are in the sick, you can, after the second year, you can make a test to go to college. We call that Kantonsschule. Am I still on the thingy? I've got a cat which is helping. So that's Cantons Schule. Actually, Schule. We don't write it with that. I just put, <laughs> put that hyphen there. Hi, Mousy. I got Mutsina looking at me. Um, and this is preparation. You need to finish those. Now they are four years. Before that, it was five years. I was the second year that had only four years. They made it shorter. At the end of that, you have you make the matur. Uh, in Switzerland, it's called matur. In Germany, it's called abitur. In English, I don't know. It's just kind of a diploma. Uh, yeah, the graduation thingy. And you need that to go on to university. So. Yeah, and you have those four years. Erste, zweite, dritte, kanti. And then there you choose a... What's it called? The Schwerpunkt. You, you fo your focus point somehow. You can either choose languages or maths. What's the third? Um, the, the, the artsy stuff. So I took... What did I take? I think I took music. My focus point was music because it was the easiest. I didn't do, I tried to do as least as possible just to get through everything. And we all have math and chemistry, physics, everybody has that. But the ones who are in the math, mathematical part, they have more deeper advanced um, maths. And you also need them mature then to go to teacher school. And I was I was planning to go to teacher school. And Mutina is not helping here. So I don't know if it's clear. Oh, Mousy. That gets a bit foo-doo. Um, yeah. And also, if you don't pass the test from the second sec, you can do it again here at the after the third, which I had to do because I didn't pass it the first time. So I did it another time. And then I went to that school. And otherwise, normally when you do this, or, or that's just not a way, you prepare for, for getting a, an apprenticeship. You try to find a job. And then you can go, I'm not sure about the second or third, then you go to an apprenticeship. Um, I don't know how, how one spells that. Where you learn a job. And there they also have school. Mostly they have mousy. <laughs> Mutsina is very annoying. Three or four years of school. And at the end of that, they do take a test um, for their job where they get tested in practical skills and also in, in th theory. And um, I've heard about um, other speaking countries who were, or people who were in, in Switzerland or Germany, who thought that that was quite mean that here it's already getting sorted who goes where. But also an apprenticeship has a big um, 
value over here because also the, the ones who build the houses or electricians, the, the, the ones who make the walls or just all those jobs, they have a thorough uh, background education and um, it, it has value to that. So it's, it's something also in your head where you give value to if it's only studying for something or, or if you also value the small things which we need to survive. Um, yeah, if you look at it like that, the farmers are the most important and they don't get that importance um, great somehow. And when you go through the real Schule, you also go towards an apprentice apprenticeship. I'm not sure about the third or something. And here on the secondary level, if you don't find an apprenticeship or you don't pass there, you can also make a fourth year. I don't know what's in there. That just gives you more time to figure out what you want to do. And also the apprenticeships as at the university, you then get a bachelor or something. I went to a Hochschule. Now, I don't really know the difference. I was just, it was specific for psychometricity therapy. It was high school, Hochschule means high school for Heilpädagogik, which is pedagogic which is um, how to work with handicapped people um, so it's not a university it's a Hochschule Hochschule is when you go deeper in one subject which was here I had psychology I had um, did I, I don't know psychology also had medicine stuff um, and in general, how development of of the one of people in physical, also mental, also with um, different steps you go through and physical uh, from toddler to being grown up. They they start when do they start speaking when they and when they start um, drawing things. What are the stages that might be the first stage and at some point they learn to do that or or they start writing and they write something and say, yeah, that means that and that. That was quite interesting because I was also, psychometricity also takes care of um, how you how you write, um, also how it works with its draw, also you, you pull the thingy, just all that stuff. It's the Hochschule and I made a, I have a bachelor at the end. And those in the apprenticeships, they can go to the Berufsmatur. And uh, they can get kind of like that diploma, just uh, from the profession, a profession matur, profession diploma. It is not as high as this one, but this matur also makes them able to go to Hochschule. Uh, I'm not sure about the university. I I don't know how high it is, but that irks them too because mature it's also they have all the different things they need to learn. And now Mutina is very annoying. So that was basically that was an overview over everything. I don't know how how right it was. Um yeah. And just another thing I would like to point out with languages, what we have to learn. I tell you what I had to do and then how it is nowadays. So in um Merci. So the I'm in Swiss German part of Switzerland. In the kindergarten, I spoke Swiss German. In the primary school, in the elementary school, I um, the the language we spoke in school had to be High German. For some, that's already a problem. But my grandmother was German, so I was used to that. Um, so it's not that different, but still it's different. Um, also, when you speak High German, which is normal German, we Swiss call it High German, uh, Hochdeutsch. So it's still on it. <laughs> Deutsch. Hoch means high and Deutsch German. Um, it's kind of a bit further away from the heart. So when we talk about our feelings and stuff, we often switch to Swiss German because High German sounds a bit too high to stealthy just different it's not so fluent a bit yeah edgy not from the sound from the language but just to produce the language is harder uh, because your tongue is not used to do that and then in the sick 
which is high school, we started with French. You ha we had to start with French um, in the first year. Everybody learns French. In the second year, I think, we could choose if we wanted to learn Italian or English. My older sister went for Italian, I went for English, so I had English, English. And then in, uh, in the Kantonsschule, which is college, I think, uh, French was all the time English that just went on. Um, some chose to learn Spanish too. I had a year of Italian, but I got too mixed up with French, so I dropped that again. That was more like for pleasure if you want to learn another one. But French, English, you have to. So, and if you didn't learn it here, um, the English, you got into some trouble there. Nowadays, it's different because people figured out that kids can learn so easy. Uh, the language is Mausi. Mausina <laughs> wants something and I, I'm annoyed. Now they already start in kindergarten with high German. And then they start with early French. I don't even know when that is. Um, already second grade. It was at some point, it was at fifth, sixth that they start with French here. I was lucky I started there. Uh, and now they all say, Mausi, Muzina, it's her, Maluf. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> she's just annoying me by walking around. Yeah. When she gets attention, she leaves. Um, now they start with French and English already in primary school. And that is not good. Um, just because kids learn languages easily doesn't mean you have that they have to learn all the languages when they are small because they should get their first language which is German in our part uh, it's not even their first it's already their second they should get that one really sorted out with the orthography and everything and then go on to the next one because you need one program very very well and very written out in your brain to add then another language to it and now they're just doing too much there so that has changed now, but I was lucky I just had that um, up here. And yeah, that is that. And now, there. Hi, Mutina. Nadu. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little um, lesson. I, I quite liked doing that. It was fun to do. If you have any questions, just ask them. There's a lot more to talk about. Um, yeah, so just ask underneath the video and uh, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.